my night. The whole place just... The ladies are taking over, men. Be very, very sweet. Would you like to call this to order? <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Men Alive Church. Everybody's in the house tonight. Good to see everyone here. Excited to uh, be together with uh, fellow believers. Happy to make a new friend tonight. Welcome to our new friend, our visitor. You're very welcome. Um, <laughs> no need to hide. Um, so I'm just getting caught up in the last couple Sundays. So I don't know if you guys missed the last couple Sundays. Please go to YouTube. Please watch the videos. Please get a CD. Amazing revelation. Our pastor is awesome. Um, two weeks ago, he talked about the earth face versus the heavenly face. And how the earth face is the dirt. And the heaven face is the water. And as I was listening to his, his talking, it's just like when he speaks, it, un, it opens a door. It's just revelation just floods in. And I was immediately brought to Jesus, born of a woman, a water birth, the rebirth. Jesus at his baptism, a water rebirth. Um, and it's the same for us. The Holy Spirit is the water rebirth for us. And the same thing that his heavenly father said to Jesus, our heavenly father says to us. Yes. In you, my beloved son, I am well yes. pleased. My yes. sons and my daughters, in you, yes. I am well pleased. All we have to do is put our hope and our trust in him, and he raises us up. Yes. And it changed my perception of the story of Noah. That teaching changed my perception of the story of Noah. The waters covered the earth, not to, not to punish man, but to redeem it. Yes. To save it from itself. Yes. And... Um, I just encourage you all, if you've been missing services, go to YouTube. The, the links are out there. You can watch the whole service uh, from beginning to end. And uh, don't miss out on a single day. Yes. If, you, if you can't be with us, I know people things have things going on. But watch the services and get every bit of revelation so we can keep together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any, uh, yeah. Any prayer requests or any testimonies tonight? Yeah, Sarah. Well, I did post it on our Facebook page, but... Um... And I'm glad that Belle came tonight because uh, we when we did that show in, in Minnesota, Belle went with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I probably would not have had a better person come with me. Uh, Belle is really passionate about what we do. And our products have actually helped change her life, too. And so people with testimonies, as we all know, um, they have something important to say and have something important to spread. Uh, but uh, Friday, when we were all set up, it was actually only a buyer's day, so only people who were buying could come in. And I, I kind of left Belle alone in the in the booth for most of the time. It was only a three, it was only three hours, so three to six, right? And I went out and I was talking to other vendors to see kind of where they're going next, what new shows are coming up, trying to make connections. And uh, Belle talked to probably about 15 different buyers, and um, they started this new. Um, uh, contest, so to speak, this year, and uh, they always had a like a, a, a favorite choice award on Saturdays. But they decided this year to allow the buyers to choose their favorite booth with their favorite products in it, and we won. With that comes free registration for next year, which that's is huge because that's like a you know seven hundred dollar expense that we will have to have.
it was a really great time, and um, I just wanted to that's my testimony. I'm thankful. Yes. Amen. Yes. So thankful. Amen. Um, and I, you know, it's the little things, right? So I had to, um, whenever we schedule meetings in winter, we drive everywhere in Iowa. So when I scheduled an Esterville meeting for Monday, December 4th, I was a little concerned <laughs> that I might be calling that one in or spending the night. Um, but you know what? The weather turned bad, but it was just as I was leaving. And the roads were fine, and I was just so thankful that the ice snow that was hitting me was on my way home, and the roads were just fine. Yeah, so I'm just thankful they, uh, the, the client called me. She's like, the roads, it was like a whiteout by 8.30. I'm like, I was gone by 7. <laughs> so, yeah, perfect timing. The Lord knows. It's yes. perfect timing. I got far enough yeah. south. It didn't even hit me. So, awesome. yeah, I'm pretty, wow. very thankful yes. for yes. everything that he does. Anyone else tonight? Yeah, Mike. Um, Tim uh, sent me a message that uh, I didn't know about it, that Lee had, Lee had surgery today. Everything oh. went well. She's out of it. Uh, the surgeon was uh, even knows the Lord and everything else. So I'll just keep them lifted up and for her total uh, healing up. I don't know what the situation was, but the Lord knows and she's been taken care of. So just lift them out of their families up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I do have one request. Um, one of my coworkers, her nephew, was just diagnosed with a very rare um, disease syndrome genetic disorder I don't even know what really to call it um, he has they thought it was epilepsy but it's not it's just degenerative brain disease I don't or disorder um, seizures until he like is paralyzed and dies at, before 20 and I don't receive that diagnosis this little boy is three years old and um, so I, I just I had we had a meeting today she got the bad news I got the diagnosis she went to pull together we had a client meeting we had time in the car, and she's like, I don't. She goes, I know. Like, she's one that I've been talking to a lot this year. She's really had a tough year. Um, a lot of us have had tough years. And she's like, I just, I know that, I know that God can teach me something through this. I just don't know why he thinks I'm this strong. And I'm like, God's not doing this. Religion wants to tell us that God does these things to us. But the truth is that we're in this world. The world does this stuff to us. The, and she's like, I should be mad at the devil. I'm like, yes, yes, you should. He's the one that's doing this. God is not punishing you. God is not testing no, you. Right. God doesn't do that. But God can turn everything into a blessing if we will trust him. Right. If we will put our faith in him. And I, and I testify to the miracles of healing that have happened to people in our church body. I'm like, you know. And so we all know stories of someone who beat the odds. And we all know stories of someone who is miraculously healed. Yes. So let's find the hope. Let's turn to Jesus Christ. Let's. Put Leo in his hands. Yes. Leo is this little boy's name. I'd like us to remember Leo in prayer. I don't even know the name of the syndrome. I don't even really care because I want God to do something yes. powerful for that little boy. In the name of Jesus, yeah. Yes. Uh, Peter, uh, I thought it was going to be here tonight. Uh, he has his boss is facing some situations right now. I can't remember the exact situation. Was it lupus? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what it was. Yes. So, uh, uh, we'll, we'll find that out. Oh, <laughs> I got it right here. Peter? No, I get you to have my phone number. Right. Yes. Yeah. Deal with it. Deal with it. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Jamie James. and Cameron, the way I um, talk to people, I just got a new job, and they need to go to pay. When Jamie is a younger lady, it's some, uh, well, YouTuber, and how long did I see your work? She's had migraines, so it's two people willing to, to let go. And the bitter is because Joe's got a different job, and we're going to get an hour and even find out some of this type of this bitterness would stop right in my house. That's what I like about. Okay. Yes. No, James. Pray for that. Yes. And Michael, did we want to ask for prayer for Josh? Um, do you want to share? Okay. Uh, Michael's oldest son, well, his only son, um, Joshua, um, is struggling um, a work situation, a mental health situation, all sorts of um, battles he's facing. Those things are affecting his relationships, um, especially with his mother, who is his boss, 
who is a very complicated situation. Um, he's feeling very lost. He's feeling very hurt. And um, I would just like to ask for prayer for Josh. Um, you know, as, as our children get older, they don't become any less our babies. And, you know, I've had the pleasure of being Josh's bonus mom for 11 years now. And he's just as dear to me as, as my son. And um, it hurts when we can't fix it and we can't grab people by the ears and be like, seriously? Mom, up. <laughs> um, but it goes both ways. And so um, just pray for that situation, uh, for peace, and yes. for Josh to see the hope, which I don't think he can see right now. In Jesus' name, yeah. Pastor Nathan. Is he getting his other eye working? I don't know. Uh, I think so. Yeah, we, we were yeah. guesstimating that that yeah. might be the case. Okay. Just pray for totalness on that. Okay. Yes. Peter. Hey. We uh, we already asked for prayer for your boss, but if there's anything you'd like to share? Um, my coworker's mom needs prayer. Still, the one that's getting over cancer. My coworker needs prayer because she's she's dealing with a lot. Um. Her and I have shared, she's shared with me some some things that she has seen in the supernatural that have happened. I mean, she's she's Catholic. When we were all online talking about the project the other day, yesterday actually, she said that she literally heard her life, it sounded like a dragon in the other room, right. and it terrified her. So, you know, it, it's, I just, I need a little bit of wisdom on how to, how to explain some of these things and express them and you know I'm telling her about you know using the name of Jesus trying to talk about the blood of Jesus she, since she's Catholic she's thinking holy water and, right. and other things yeah, Mary's, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. so you know I, I've explained to her some of the things that, that I've experienced in my life in the supernatural some of the things Jamie's experienced in the supernatural you know because I want her to know these things are real I believe exactly what you're, you're telling me I'm, I'm happy you're opening up to me um, so I need wisdom in, in how, you know, trying to talk to somebody about angels and demons that doesn't quite understand angels and demons and the fact that they're real, uh, just need some wisdom there. Um, I need some wisdom, a lot of wisdom. I, today I officially ran out of I, I mean, literally I only have enough to pay the current bill that I'm paying in. And I don't have enough between now and the next payday to pay the next two bills for coming through. So um, it's what it is. I feel like I'm doing what God wanted me to do, but I'm I'm really struggling. I'm struggling in a lot of areas. I hate my job, but it, it pays the bills. I mean, we're still dealing with that thirteen thousand dollar pay cut from last year, and you know, right now we're down to one vehicle that's running. So. You know, I know a lot of this is on me. I'm not blaming God for any of this, but I need, I'm not sure exactly what I need to do and how I need to do it, because I'm just, you know, I, I was online working last night late also, and I'm still not getting everything done that I need to get done. And, you know, I don't know when to find the time or the resources to do what I feel God's called me to do. I am, I'm discouraged. Well, I'm not going to claim that. I feel it. So, and it's been too long. I mean, we've been dealing we've been dealing with this really for the last oh my gosh, probably last 16 years. So, it's time. It's time. Yeah. So anyway, that's where I'm at. So I'm here. Yeah. So I need prayer for a lot of different things right now. Um, would you be okay if we gathered and laid oh, hands sure. on you? I, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll make it easy on you. You don't have to walk all the way back here. <laughs> <laughs> I've already walked a half mile. I can walk a few more times. Mm -hmm. We know, Lord, we never fail us. We won't fail us in the situation. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, God, for your goodness in his life, Lord. It's goodness and truth. She has a love. We have a lot of blessings upon him and his family. Children of the chief and favor him. He's not favored in him. These are your words, not our words. So we stand together. Vision. Jesus, she can be hope. We stand out of peace. Joy. Joy. The Lord is joyful. The Lord is thankful that we can come and be honest with each other. Yeah. I'm so thankful this is a safe place. Lord. We don't we don't judge, we don't condemn. We lift up and we put it in God's hands where he can do something out of nothing. We don't even need a mustard seed of faith. We just got to get our butt through the door and he does all the rest. He does all the rest. That's the biggest challenge sometimes is just to drag our frustrated, discouraged, distracted, rear ends through the door and get here and let God do what God always does. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you know what? Okay. Yes. For what? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. For a co-worker named Reggie who tried to commit Ricky. A lady named Ricky, a co-worker and a friend. Yeah. And a believer. Wow. Oh. Wow. Um, no. So if you would just remember my prayer. As you're doing, I promise now. I mean, she's back to work and she's okay. She says, just want to be sure and and pray covering over her. Yes. Spirit covering over her. Yes. Yes, Lord. So, all year, it's been like a theme. Well, two things, right? Let it go. Let it go. 
and light it up. God, where the darkness is the yes. grossest and where the darkness is the scariest, light it up, Lord. Yes. Send us to yes. light it up, Lord. Send us to speak hope and truth yes. and life. Yes. To light it up with truth yes. and joy. Jesus, you know the darkest places in our hearts and our minds. As believers, it doesn't make us immune. But we say light it up, Lord. Light it up with your presence, Lord, with your spirit, with the encouragement of fellow believers, with the word of God spoken, the seeds planted in our hearts. Let the word in our hearts cry out. Light it up, Lord. The enemy must flee when you come. The enemy cannot stand. His lies are silenced when you show up, Lord. So send us. Open our eyes to see those who need to light up. To see and hear when people are telling us their troubles. They're saying, light it up. Jesus. Jesus. You have sent us as your hands and your feet, as your mouth. As the light of the world is the salt of this world. Let us go forth in boldness, declaring the truth of Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Who can be against us? Who can stand before him? Jesus. Jesus. You are our hope. You are our joy. Jesus. You have finished it all. If we will simply rest and the promise to see ourselves as you see us, Lord, perfect, righteous, to go forth into all the earth, into all the earth, until your glory covers the earth as the waters in the days of Noah. Let your glory light it up, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. You have heard our prayers tonight. You have heard the requests that grieve our hearts. Yes. And if they grieve our human hearts, so full of darkness and humanity, we know how it grieves your heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're so thankful to know you. We're so thankful that you have called us by name. You have picked every single one of us out and called us your own. You've chosen us to be part of your holy family for all of eternity. Full of love and light. Jesus, let us rule and reign in this earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Reminder if you brought a cell phone tonight to uh, silence them until after the service. It's Friday night. Oh, come, let us adore him. I feel like it's already started, Mike. It's all about him. Amen. Let's just take more distance, all the distractions of this season, kick it off to the curbs right now. Let's deal with it. Please, if you can, get through those doors and for five minutes on Friday night. Come join us if you can. Amen. Come join us if you can. Fantastic time in the Lord. This Friday, 7 o'clock. Two hours of prayer and praise and worship and fellowship. and It's kind of like IHOP, yeah. It's our version of IHOP, yeah. Eastern Gate House Prayer. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, we do uh, communion. We pray for one another. We worship. Well, we don't know what's going to happen. We just show up and we let God do what God does. And it's amazing every time. And we have a church again. Okay. Time for your offertory. I'm putting something in here. <laughs> oh, did the realm shift? Did it already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all right. Um, okay, uh, Ron. Since I remembered your name, um, <laughs> I am horrified that I <laughs> can't remember his or read his name at that moment. If you would come take an offering, good sir. I would very much appreciate it. <laughs> oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
holy Lord. Yes, Lord. We know, God, that if we come to you with anything, Lord, you are quick to answer us. We just trust you right now, God. In this service tonight, Lord, you are here. You are ever-present, Lord. And we just thank you right now, God, for the word, the words that are going to come forth. These are your words. They are not mine, Lord. Yes, Lord. They're your words. We just thank you, Lord. I praise you for every good gift that you give to your children. Every good thing comes from above. It trickles down. It rains down. And it plants the fruit, God. The fruit that we bring forth to this nation. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. I thought he visited us for a minute. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It gets me every time. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's good. Yes. Thank you, everybody. No. It's okay. Thank you. It always feels like we have about a thousand people in the room when we worship. It's a good feeling. Yes. So, I just want to start off tonight. And the message that God gave me was this. It's raining in this life through Christ. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So, there are going to be three things that you're going to hear me say a lot tonight. And the three things are this. Christ. Finished work and rain. So I would like to start off with this and really listen to these words. <clears throat> Knowing that you are completely forgiven destroys the power of sin or unbelief in your life. Yes. Knowing that you are completely forgiven destroys the power of sin or unbelief in your life. The revelation we're receiving in this church has changed me and has transformed my life. It has humbled me in ways that I never imagined. It has taught me to be slow in anger and love the best that I can love. To see people as Christ and Him crucified. It has helped me to stay focused on His truth, Help me to lean on Him when the world shouts loud. It has helped me to see His righteousness in my life. I have become Christ conscious, and it's a good feeling. Yes. I look to the cross and I see Him crucified. He suffered a crucial death for me, for you, and I believe God does not want us to take that lightly. I speak because of the cross that I am the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. I speak that daily. Sometimes I speak that four times even before I get out of bed. <laughs> Jesus himself said that those who are forgiven much will love him much. And those who are forgiven little or those who think that they are forgiven little will love him only little. The more we realize that we have been forgiven much, which is actually all of our sins, yes. the more we will fall in love with our Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Knowing that we are forgiven does not lead to a lifestyle of sin. It leads to a life of glorifying Him, yes. which I believe will also empower us to reign in this life through Him. So... You know, in Genesis 1.31, Mike, if you want to bring that up. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1.31 that when God saw everything he made, which we know included creating man and woman in his image, verse 131 describes that he said it was very good. So then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Not just good, not just fair, 
but very good. I like to look up the meaning of words, so I feel like it just punches at home for me. So I looked up the word very, and this is what it says, very, to a high degree, exceedingly. So when God created man and woman in his image, he called it to a high degree of good. Now we all know that Adam fell and sin entered into the equation. But, and this is a big but, the Bible tells us in Romans 5.17, I think I have the amplified, but maybe not. Um, Romans 5.17. It says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of the righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And so this is the emphasis of God's message tonight to us, is reigning in life through Christ. Do we all understand that before the foundation of the world that we were in the mind of God? Do we really understand that before he formed the world, we were in his mind? In Ephesians 1.4, it tells us that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. It also says in Romans 8.29-30, and this is, I'm reading the Amplified. You'll see the King James Version up there. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, he foreordained them, to be molded into the image of his Son, and share inwardly his likeness, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous, putting them into right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. So God raised those whom he justified to a heavenly state or quality of being worthy of honor. This is us, church. What you just heard me describe is you and me. If you are saved, he foreordained you. He wants us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are righteous, that we are acquitted, meaning made innocent, Amen. put into right standing with him. He wants us to constantly have an awareness of this so that we can take our place in this earth, reigning through him. He wants us to simply turn our eyes away from ourselves, and occupy ourselves with Jesus. Amen. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He wants you to know that you are not mediocre. You do not take a back seat to the world. Instead, he wants you reigning in this life over every situation, Peter, over every situation that tries to puff itself up over the true word of God. We need to stop letting the enemy deceive or steal our identity. You see, he tries to be like a bully on a playground. Constant nagging and shouting sometimes takes a low blow. But through God's eyes, he looks at you, he sees Jesus. Sometimes I wonder if God is just like, don't just stand there. Fight back with my word. Punch that liar back with my word. He's a already a defeated foe. The enemy cannot stand in the presence of God. And guess what? That presence is in us. He's in us. So he cannot stand against us. The enemy has fooled us for way too long. We were made for so much more than the life that we are currently living. It even says in Romans 8.19 that the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes. 821 says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So creation is longing and waiting for us to take our stance. God does not want us to be tossed to and fro with every situation. He wants us to set 
and steady our feet on his truth, his promises. Do you understand that the devil is out to stop the favor of God in your life? He wants to try to keep blinders on us and use deception so that we don't step into the favor or realize our true identity. The word deceive means this. Cause someone to believe something that is not true in order to gain some personal advantage. So I really think and truly believe that the devil thinks he can still win. I think he tries to deceive our minds to gain his own glory. He's a liar and he's the author of it. He's not winning. He's not on top. He's not anything. The only way he can gain anything is if we allow him to keep lying to our minds, our bodies, our finances, our weaknesses. I'm saying it's time to back him up and out of our lives. It's time to coast with Jesus on top of the wave, soar high above with him. He called you to reign. Amen. I also looked up the meaning of reign, and it says to hold royal office, to rule as a king or a queen. Revelation 5.10. says this, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And the Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, because as he is, so are we in the world. We are to reign or hold royal office in this present time as Christ did when he walked on earth. Mm. And how did Christ reign? John 12, 49. John 12, 49. He says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. He reigned on the earth by speaking things his father spoke, speaking the things that are not as though they are. We need to continually have this at the forefront of our minds, only speaking God's truth. When our minds or thoughts contradict the truth, we need to pull down the stronghold and replace it with the truth from God. The moment we think thoughts of failure, guilt, fear, anxiety, lack, defeat, Immediately, we need to occupy our minds with positive thoughts of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the key word here is immediately. This is about being quick to believe, so it needs to happen fast. Immediately see Jesus in your situation. Immediately ocup occupy your mind with thoughts of his love, his peace, his loving hand over your life, and his finished work. We need to constantly remind ourselves that we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. So this tells me that we need to speak our righteousness. We need to speak God's truth to our troubling situations. You know that God's word is always near us, right? It's always near us. Uh, Romans 10, 8. I'm going to read it out of the amp Amplified. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. This is the word, the message, the basis of faith which we preach. So whatever situation you are faced with that is contrary to the word, find God's truth that is near you and that is in your mouth and heart to speak to that situation. Reign over the situation with the word of God. He wants us to stop trying to achieve and begin receiving the favor, the blessings and healing that Jesus accomplished on the cross. When he hung on the cross 2,000 years ago, he cried with a loud voice it is finished yes. 
Everything that you and I require to reign in life was accomplished at Calvary on our behalf. That's why we call what Jesus did on the cross his finished work. He finished it. He completed it. It is done. The only thing that works is the finished work. <laughs> Stop doing what's already done. Stop doing and start receiving what Jesus has done. We have been taught to focus on achieving, on doing, on relying on our self-effort for so long. We are driven to do, do, do. Forgetting that Christianity is all actually already done because of the death of Christ. And He accomplished it for all of us, church. Now our part is to believe on that finished work. To believe that He accomplished all things for us. Yes. To give up on our own self-efforts to earn and qualify for God's blessing in our lives. We are already qualified. Yes. We are already yes. blessed. Yes. Jesus accomplished it all on yes. the cross. Yes. Our part is to trust in his perfect yes. work. Yes. Receive with open arms the abundance of grace yes. and the gift of righteousness. And begin to reign in life through the one, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. We need to continue to have the Holy Spirit teach us to depend on Jesus' finished work, which will allow us to receive by His grace. It's all about Jesus. Yes. The more you appreciate the finished work of Jesus and all that He has done for you to reign in this life, the more you will worship and glorify Him. You are called to reign. He destined you to be the head, not the tail. Above only, not beneath. So again, back to Romans 5.17. It says, For if by the trespass of one Adam, death reigned through the one Adam, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in eternal life through the one Jesus Christ. So when I read that, I think, you know, so for so long we've had teachings on sin. We've had teachings on law and grace being mixed. And we've actually based some of our lives around those teachings. Why not step into this reality? This reality and have it be truth in our lives. Based on the authority of God's word, in which I just read in 517, you are destined to reign in life through Christ. Yes. To have dominion over all your challenges Amen. and your circumstances. You are called to enjoy a life of victory. Yes. In every area, victory. And Christ, our King of kings and Lord of lords, provided this victory to you when he hung on, his, on the cross. Mm -hmm. God sacrificed his son for you, Sarah. For you, Ron. Yes. Suzanne, Toby. Yes. Everybody in this room, he sacrificed his son for us. And he did it for you to reign. Mm -hmm. Let's step into that realm and stay there. Let's not do what James 1.24 describes. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Let's not go back out into the world tomorrow forgetting who we are. Instead, let's soak in the living water and let that water spring forth and continually flow from our innermost being. Allow Jesus to saturate the surrounding. Become like Him. He's whole. He's stable and sound in mind and body. So much so that those around you want to jump in that water and soak with you. So I challenge you, every time you feel defeated, Practice being conscious of Jesus in your life. Being conscious of Him in your life. Despite what you're feeling, see Him loving you, being with you, holding your hand, guiding you out of your fear, doubt, pain, guilt. Don't be slow of heart to believe. Be quick to believe that Jesus is with you. He's with you. He's with you. <laughs> Receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Mm -hmm. God promised that when we receive these things, we will reign in life. Yes. Let's choose to reign in this life. Amen? Yes. yes. So I encourage you.
challenge you as you go through the rest of this week to speak God's truth. Speak your righteousness because Christ's death on the cross. And have faith in Him knowing that your circumstances must change for the good. For all things work together for good to those that believe. That's all I got. <laughs> Amen. Hope to see you Sunday. <laughs> Friday night. Oh, Friday night. Friday night. Sorry. Friday night. See you Sunday yeah. and Friday. Yeah, there we go. Friday and Sunday. <laughs> Amen. It was quick. I told you it was real quick. <laughs> but powerful, I hope. <laughs> Yeah. Friday night is half price, Sunday's half price, right? Sure.